Hi, I'd like to show you how to use Dialog APL to parse the contents of text files that contain data in unusual formats. First off, we're going to have a regular comma-separated file. Luckily, Dialog APL has a quad CSV which can easily do this job. The first element of the argument is the file name or the content itself. Next is a specification of what type of content it is, but that can usually be inferred, so we can give it an empty vector. Finally, there's a code for conversion. This is because comma-separated files do not distinguish between numbers and text. However, code number four uses a heuristic if something looks like a number, then we'll convert it to a number. Otherwise, we'll just leave it as text. And here we go. Here's our numeric matrix. Next up is something that's a list of numbers. And you might not think of this as a comma-separated file. But you can actually parse, this, parse it as such, and you will just have a single column. In order to get a vector that we can work with, we simply revel it. Next, we have a bit map, or a, ma a matrix of bits represented as the characters 0 and 1. And this doesn't look like a comma-separated file at all either. There are no separators. However, Quad CSV has a variant option that where you can, instead of using a separator, use widths. And we have eight columns, each one has width one. And here's our Boolean matrix. Of course, it's not so much fun to have to count how many columns there are. So what we can do is we can use quad get to read in the file first and do a little bit of analysis on it so we know how many columns there are. We ask for a, a vector of character vectors with this one flag. This gives us a nested result. Getting just the first one um, allows us to count how many there are. But since we want the widths as a vector of ones, we can actually just do a one constant for each one. And now we can take this and use as our widths. And then we just take the data as before. Wrap the entire thing in a defin, variant widths, and now it's all automatic. Next we've got something that decidedly doesn't look like a separator, say a separated file. However, we can notice that the labels on the left have a consistent width and the single character on the on the right is also well just a single character so we could actually split this with width as well first we have three characters for this label and then four characters for the space equal equal space and then a single character It doesn't actually matter the, to specify the conversion to numbers, because there are no numbers here. OK, this gives us an extra column in the middle that we don't want, because you just want the labels and the characters so we can start processing them. We can then use a horizontal compress to remove the middle column, and then we can take it from there. We can do something very similar to this file. Even though it looks like there are multiple levels of nesting, we can start off with the width one column for the single digit, one column for the semicolon separator, one column for the second digit that's there, then four columns for space to space, and then we have the same kind of pattern again.
this is seven columns and we only want every other one. So we do a cyclic ro uh, reshape of one zero for our mask and do the horizontal compress and there we go. If you want to make pairs two and two then uh, we can use partition for this. Begin a new partition, continue the same partition. Begin a new partition, continue the same partition. And now we've got two matrices, the beginning points and uh, the end points. We could also apply this rank 1 in order to get a matrix of beginning pairs and end pairs and take it from there. This might not look like a data file at all, but if you count you'll see that every row has exactly four words. And so, uh, instead of being comma separated, we can call this space separated. So we set the separator to a space and we've got ourselves a matrix of words. Here are some uh, keywords and values again separated by a space. Because we have the four for the conversion code, so that things that look like numbers are treated like numbers, this just works. Okay, this one is a bit tougher because we want to separate out uh, each table that are empty line separated. Let's start off uh, by figuring out the width of the columns. So we could look at this as the first column has uh, of numbers takes two characters and the following ones use three characters each. Two followed by four that are three. Okay, now we can split it on rows that begin with empty character vectors. So how do we find the empty character vectors? Let's take the left column and the tally of each. The numbers have tally 1 and the empty character vectors have tally 0. And then we can use this to partition the split, because partition likes to take a vector. So we split the matrix into individual rows, and then we partition like that. And here we have um, a vector of vectors of vectors. Mix that twice, and we've got a rank 3 array of numbers. Another possibility uh, is to compute the exact width. Here we were lucky that it was easy to spot where the column splits were, but they might have had different widths. So how can we detect where the columns the separations are? Let's, let's begin by getting in the data. And we give a 1 to quad n get to say we want a vector of vectors. If we mix this, we get a character matrix. Now we can compare with space, and this gives us a Boolean matrix marking where the spaces are. And AND reduction 
will tell us columns that are entirely made of spaces. These are the beginning points for every column that when we're going to cut it up, except the first column uh, doesn't begin with a space, so we'll change the into a 1 at position 1. These are our beginning marks. The only thing we want to know is how wide are these columns. So we can use this to self-partition and then get the length of each. There we go. And then we proceed, uh, like we did before, to split it in by the lines that begin with an empty vector. split and finally the mix okay this is a tough one because not only do we have the separations with empty spaces we also have these headings um, and we want to extract the number from the headings what we're going to do is we're going to start by getting in the content of the file as vector vector. Now we're going to split it on empties. So we can get the length of each and we can get whether or not the length is uh, non-zero by taking the sign of that. We can use this to partition what we've got. So now we have each board with its heading um, in, its, in a separate element. This means we can write a little utility function and apply to each to process it. For each board and its heading, uh, we want to separate it into two elements. One is the heading itself and one is uh, the board the data from the board so the heading is the first element and the uh, the board are the remaining elements now we just need to parse each part well the board content itself that is exactly the content of a of a comma separated file so we can use quad csv on that And then we need to gather out the number from uh, the board heading. And for that, we have verify and fix input. It gives us a two element result. The first one is um, a check for each token in that character vector. Did it form a correctly formed number or not? And the second element are the values with zeros uh, put in at places where we could not evaluate to a number. All this is safe, we're not executing anything. Now we know there's only one number so we don't need to actually check. We can just take the second element and since we know that there will only be one number and the rest are zeros, we can just take the largest one from that and we're done. If we want we can stack these on top of each other. That's all. I'll take all the codes and put them into the description of this video. Thank you for watching.